Chapter 14 And the Lord said to Moses, The following instructions must be followed by those seeking purification from a contagious skin disease. Those who have been healed must be brought to the priest, who will examine them at a place outside the camp. If the priest finds that someone has been healed of the skin disease, he will perform a purification ceremony, using two wild birds of a kind permitted for food, along with some cedar wood, a scarlet cloth, and a hyssop branch. The priest will order one of the birds to be slaughtered over a clay pot that is filled with fresh spring water. He will then dip the living bird, along with the cedar wood, the scarlet cloth, and the hyssop branch, into the blood of the slaughtered bird. The priest will also sprinkle the dead bird's blood seven times over the person being purified, and the priest will pronounce that person to be ceremonially clean. At the end of the ceremony, the priest will set the living bird free so it can fly away into the open fields. The people being purified must complete the cleansing ceremony by washing their clothes, shaving off all their hair, and bathing themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially clean and may return to live inside the camp. However, they must still remain outside their tents for seven days. On the seventh day they must again shave off all their hair, including the hair of the beard and eyebrows, and wash their clothes and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be pronounced ceremonially clean. On the next day, the eighth day, each person cured of the skin disease must bring two male lambs and one female year-old lamb with no physical defects, along with five quarts of choice flour mixed with olive oil and three-fifths of a pint of olive oil. Then the officiating priest will present that person for cleansing, along with the offerings before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will take one of the lambs and the olive oil and offer them as a guilt offering by lifting them up before the Lord. He will then slaughter the lamb there in the sacred area at the place where sin offerings and burnt offerings are slaughtered. As with the sin offering, the guilt offering will be given to the priest. It is a most holy offering. The priest will then take some of the blood from the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the healed person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. Then the priest will pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then put some of the oil remaining in his left hand on the tip of the healed person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, in addition to the blood of the guilt offering. The oil remaining in the priest's hand will then be poured over the healed person's head. In this way, the priest will make atonement before the Lord for the person being cleansed. Then the priest must offer the sin offering and again perform the atonement ceremony for the person cured of the skin disease. After that, the priest will slaughter the whole burnt offering and offer it on the altar along with the grain offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the person being cleansed, and the healed person will be ceremonially clean. But anyone who cannot afford two lambs must bring one male lamb for a guilt offering, along with two quarts of choice flour mixed with olive oil as a grain offering, and three-fifths of a pint of olive oil. The guilt offering will be presented by lifting it up, thus making atonement for the person being cleansed. The person being cleansed must also bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of the pair must be used for a sin offering, and the other for a whole burnt offering. On the eighth day, the person being cleansed must bring the offerings to the priest for the cleansing ceremony to be performed in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle entrance. The priest will take the lamb for the guilt offering, along with the olive oil, and lift them up before the Lord as an offering to him. Then the priest will slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering, and put some of its blood on the tip of the person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot. The priest will also pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil, and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then put some of the olive oil from his hand on the lobe of the person's right ear, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of the right foot, in addition to the blood of the guilt offering. The oil that is still in the priest's hand will then be poured over the person's head. 
In this way, the priest will make atonement for the person being cleansed. Then the priest will offer the two turtle doves or the two young pigeons, whichever the person was able to afford. One of them is for a sin offering, and the other for a whole burnt offering to be presented along with the grain offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement before the Lord for the person being cleansed. These are the instructions for cleansing those who have recovered from a contagious skin disease, but who cannot afford to bring the sacrifices normally required for the ceremony of cleansing. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you arrive in Canaan, the land I am giving you as an inheritance, I may contaminate some of your houses with an infectious mildew. The owner of such a house must then go to the priest and say, It looks like my house has some kind of disease. Before the priest examines the house, he must have the house emptied so everything inside will not be pronounced unclean. Then the priest will go in and inspect the house. If he finds bright green or reddish streaks on the walls of the house, and the contamination appears to go deeper than the wall's surface, he will leave the house and lock it up for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must return for another inspection. If the mildew on the walls of the house has spread, the priest must order that the stones from those areas be removed. The contaminated material will then be thrown into an area outside the town designated as ceremonially unclean. Next, the inside walls of the entire house must be scraped thoroughly, and the scrapings dumped into the unclean place outside the town. Other stones will be brought in to replace the ones that were removed, and the walls will be replastered. But if the mildew reappears after all these things have been done, the priest must return and inspect the house again. If he sees that the affected areas have spread, the walls are clearly contaminated with an infectious mildew, and the house is defiled. It must be torn down, and all its stones, timbers, and plaster must be carried out of town to the place designated as ceremonially unclean. Anyone who enters the house while it is closed will be considered ceremonially unclean until evening. All who sleep or eat in the house must wash their clothing. But if the priest returns for his inspection and finds that the affected areas have not reappeared after the fresh plastering, then he will pronounce the house clean because the infectious mildew is clearly gone. To purify the house, the priest will need two birds, some cedar wood, a scarlet cloth, and a hyssop branch. He will slaughter one of the birds over a clay pot that is filled with fresh spring water. Then he will dip the cedar wood, the hyssop branch, the scarlet cloth, and the living bird into the blood of the slaughtered bird, and he will sprinkle the house seven times. After he has purified the house in this way, he will release the living bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way the priest will make atonement for the house, and it will be ceremonially clean. These are the instructions for dealing with the various kinds of contagious skin disease and infectious mildew, whether in clothing, in a house, in a swollen area of skin, in a skin rash, or in a shiny patch of skin. These instructions must be followed when dealing with any contagious skin disease or infectious mildew to determine when something is ceremonially clean or unclean.